Hello, hello, and welcome to today's class in the How to Move Your Body Yoga program. Today we're doing a full body class, slow and strong sun salutations. So in the context of the program that we've been doing, we've been working with the feet and the ankles so far. So this is going to give us a chance to explore those different ranges of motions in the context of full body movement. And so if you're newer to sun salutations, uh, know that this is, it progressively gets easier. We progressively learn how to do it more and more and things start to feel more second nature to us. So um, if you are someone who's newer to this and you want to use a chair, for example, I uh, have a blog post written about sun salutations for chairs. So you can just use this video alongside that as a companion guide to really kind of uh, individualize this practice for you today. So let's get started. Let's get started with our feet right down underneath our hips and then see how we set them. So most of the time we're just kind of going based on how we've always set our feet in the past, which is maybe not super intentional. So we wanna set our legs, our feet, our knees, everything in neutral. For most bodies, neutral is like, imagine all your joints had laser beams on them. Those laser beams would be pointing straight ahead. So I'm gonna bend my knees just a little bit to see how do I need to set my feet. Once I set my feet, I'm gonna say, have I set them well? Can I lift the heels of my feet, stretch the ball mounds forward one at a time so I know my feet are now really heavy and dense on the ground? And then can I take my knees right up over my ankles without locking them up, without sucking them back? Can I draw length up my thigh bones evenly from my inner and outer knee up into my pelvis? Can I see that my pelvis is neutrally set here so it's neither tilting forward or scooping super underneath? So if you're kind of patterned to do one of those most of the time, this will feel like a little bit of effort to hold yourself here. And then to the best of your abilities, feeling the navel draw back and up, the chest opens, the shoulders set on top of the pelvis, and the skull draws back over that. Soften your face, soften your eyes. So the muscles that control your eyes are a little bit softer. Maybe they just kind of settle on the horizon for now. Take a full breath in through your nose. See how low in your body can you get it all the way down to your hips. And slowly exhale. I'm going to do in through the nose out through the nose until I get too hot or when something gets challenging, I usually breathe out through the mouth. I just find that that keeps me more relaxed because I want now to be the time where my nervous system moves into a calm place where my attention is a little bit more available to me. I'm not thinking so much. I don't have an agenda playing. And the way that that happens is when we breathe lower in the body. So see what you can do to not breathe so much in your chest, to not breathe so much through your ribs, but first to send the breath wide and low and then let it fill up your torso like light filling up a room. And without moving your body so much, let this action be generated by the shoulders and by the arms as you start to reach the arms overhead. If you need to kind of work out through your neck a little bit, work out through your neck, especially if you feel it kinked up at all, I always just kind of move it around until it kind of naturally sets in a good place. Now the arms are overhead. See to what degree did your pelvis or your ribs kind of spill forward to enable that action. We don't want the spine to enable it. So we wanna see, can I leave my spine in neutral really long? and then reach up with the skin of my armpits, the skin of my upper arms, the skin of my side waist. Some of us might feel better to have the elbows a little bit wider or even to have the arms more forward. And then on your exhale, arms out and down. So go with what makes sense to you here, letting the arms float up on some inhales and float out and down on some exhales. Sometimes I just kind of let my chin bow in to ensure that the back of my neck isn't sort of pinching. And I want to feel my chest as open as possible here. 
So I want to notice as I take my arms overhead, to what degree am I really back bending to get that to happen? Or to what degree am I kind of forward bending to get that to happen? And I wanna see if I can really be honest and take the spine just to neutral. So go ahead and release the arms there, kind of shake it out, maybe rock a little bit forward and backward in your feet. So whatever residue we have physically, psychologically, we just kind of address, maybe you bend into your knees, maybe you roll out through the shoulders a little bit, even rolling out through the chin. And then setting the body back into an upright position to the best we can. Same way that we just set up the body before. Use your next inhale breath to reach the arms wide and high. And on your exhale breath, soften your hands down to your hips. Take a slight little bend into the knee and start to work your pelvis back and forth. So on the inhale, lengthen the tops of your hamstrings, sitting bones back, top of pelvis forward. And exhale, scoop the pelvis underneath. And it's okay if your spine and chest do some work too, but what we're really looking for here is pelvis mobility. So as you do this, notice, are you using your feet differently between that chain of movement, your lower legs, your thighs, and try to work your legs evenly through the whole cycle. And then the next time that you fold your pelvis over your thighs, do it dramatically. Really take the hip bones and thighs together, even if you need to bend the knees a little bit more to make that happen. So now you feel that there's space in the upper hamstring there. And then from there, to the best of our abilities, we're gonna keep the pelvis and the thigh bones close together as we let the upper body relax forward, maybe shifting the backs of the legs higher at the same time, maybe. And now it's here for some friends where the floor is gonna seem really far away or even the shape that I'm making is gonna look like super impossible to you. The good thing is, is that these muscles in the back of our legs have a lot of play in them. So the more that we work this position, the easier we'll find it for the most part. The important thing is that the pelvis is folding forward. So if you're really high, you know, something like this, then I would recommend using your legs or potentially even using the back of a chair. And take deep, low breaths here. Soften through your face, soften through the back of the neck. Maybe even take some shoulder rolls if that feels good. Both directions. And on the next breath in, we'll float up to what's called halfway lift. And this is where we'll all be quite unique in space. For some of us who are a bit tighter back here, this might feel very similar to the pose we just did. The point is that we're trying to lift out of our pelvis and elongate through the belly, through the sideways, through the back body. And then we're trying to tip the weight as far forward as we can in the feet so that we feel the hamstrings turn on, the buttocks turn on to help support this position. And as my pelvis is folding forward, my abdomen is lifting into the back body to get me length through the spine and to draw out through the skull. Take a breath in and on your breath out, keep the weight forward in your feet as you fold. And breathe and ripple out of the pelvis. And exhale, fold. And now ground your feet, inhale, reach wide and high all the way up to the sky. Big breath. And on your exhale, settle the hands to the chest. And again, inhale, reaching up. On this exhale, hands down to the pelvis, soft bend into the knees, Tilt the pelvis forward as best you can, as best you can, keep going, even if you have to bend more, and then fold over the legs, release the upper body. <sighs> Inhale, wave forward out of the pelvis. And on the exhale breath, hands down to the floor. We'll step the feet back one at a time to downward facing dog position, so that upside down V. 
We'll just take some time here to each pedal out through the feet a bit, shake out through the head, see if we can weight the pose more in the hands, the fingers, less in the wrists. Spreading the shoulder blades wide. And then grounding through the ball mounts of the feet evenly. Now begin to take the heels away and down, away and down. So the legs are starting to move towards straight. And as they do that, really tilt the tailbone up to the sky. Draw the abdomen in. Draw your front ribs in. And now see if you can lightly shift forward, soften a bend into the knees, take the knees down to the floor, and then flow through some movement here, just organically, whatever feels good. So maybe some cat cows, maybe that's just kind of like hips around in some circles, maybe that's a child's pose. And this is the time to really get soft through the face again, soft through the eyes, the breathing. And then root out through the hands. Let's see, can we get soft through the face? Can we get soft through the jaw and the tongue? And as we press down, can we tuck the toes and lift the knees to a hover? Easy does it. Take a big breath in. And on your breath out, press your hips high and back, downward facing dog. The next time we breathe in, let's look forward between the hands. And on the out breath, you take your time to either walk your feet forward or bend your knees and hop the feet all the way forward to the top of the yoga mat. Forward fold. On your inhale breath, wave out of the pelvis halfway. And on your exhale breath, forward fold. Ground your feet. Inhale, reach wide and high all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reaching up to the sky. And exhale, hinge from the pelvis first. Come over the legs, forward fold. Ground your feet, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands down, step the feet back one at a time to downward facing dog. A few breaths, easy through the face, easy through the jaw. And then we're going to bend the knees, push the hips back, lift the hips up, come forward to high plank, top of a push-up. So friends, please feel free to drop down to the knees here. This pose is quite loaded, what with all of our body weight going into it. So what we want to try to do here is not freak out, is to get quiet through our face, deep with our breathing. Push out through your fingers. And now let's all lower the knees down to the floor. Stretch the pelvis forward so the heart's in line with the fingernails and breathe deep. And just reflect on this. You know, if, you're, if you do a lot of push-ups, then this will feel more natural for you. If you're newer to push-ups, then welcome. <laughs> it's fun. So the first thing is, is it's two joint changes. That's it. So we want to get nice and stable. Keep the heart in front of the fingernails. The first joint change is elbows. Bend the elbows. Second joint change is shoulder blades. Take the shoulder blades. Come all the way down to the floor. That shoulder blade one is tricky. Go ahead, stack your hands here, drop your forehead, just kind of melt your front body into the mat beneath you. Relax through your face, your jaw. I could feel my tongue was just like really pushing into the front of my mouth there. Just relax. Let's stretch the legs back one at a time, toes pointed. Uh, of course, if your plantar flexion is not this developed, you can always use a blanket underneath the ankles for more support. Keep your legs neutrally rotated in the pelvis so that your kneecaps are not widening out. And now squeeze your legs, squeeze your thighs, squeeze your 
uh, take your buttocks so that your tailbone flows to the backs of the knees. Your butt cheeks aren't clenching, but the buttocks muscles are turned on to ground the pelvis back here. So we'll go into some shoulder opening, some spinal opening, some hip opening even. So just relax your arms by your side, lengthen your skull forward, and then feel your front body lift into your back body. This is very important because we need to be able to stabilize our lower back so that the movement doesn't happen there. That's not where we want it to happen. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna see, can we lift the right leg up off the ground? Lift the right leg, but keep the tailbone flowing into the backs of the heels. And then see, can you lift your left leg off the ground? So the legs are lifted, front abdomen draws in. Then you can gently take the hands underneath the elbows, just hover it off the mat. Keep the front body lifting into the back body. Don't disturb it, try not to. Lengthen your skull forward. Now keep your legs this strong, take them back down to the floor, spread your toenails out, ground your pinky toenails down to the ground. And this is one of those big transitional poses. So we're either just working here, using our back muscles to lift our chest into that low cobra position, pulling the front body into the back body, opening the chest. For some of us who want a higher cobra or upward facing dog, you're gonna claw down. You're gonna keep your shoulders engaged and stable. You're gonna keep your front body lifting into your back body as you start to curl up, cobra, upward facing. And on your exhale, downward facing, either lift the hips, keep the knees down, pull the pelvis back in space. Ah, toes tucked, pressing up and back to downward facing. Easy through the face, easy through the breath. Again, using our inhale to look forward between the hands. And on the exhale to lightly step or take your time to bend the knees and hop all the way forward. Forward bend. Inhale, wave out of the pelvis halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Ground your feet. Inhale, reach wide and high all the way up. Exhale, hands to chest. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hinge from the pelvis. Go down, way down, way down, way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down. Step the feet back one at a time. Downward facing dog. Easy with your face, bend your knees, lift your hips, hover forward to plank, top of a push-up. And where we all kind of figure out what's next for us, are we putting our knees down? Are we keeping our knees lifted? I'll put mine down for today, just it feels better. Keeping the front body lifting into the back body. Take a big breath in. On the breath out, the first joint is the elbows, that's it. As we lower, second joint is the shoulder blades, that's it all the way down. Relaxing the tops of the feet down, flare the toenails open, squeeze the legs, take the tailbone down. Slide the hands underneath the elbows, hover the hands, so you're just using your back muscles for now. Keep the contents of your abdomen lifting. Tailbone still long, so low back long, lower abdomen long and into the spine. Keep working like this, or begin to take weight into the hands. Keep the front body curling into the back body as you come on up, forward, cobra, upward facing dog. And then on your exhale, downward facing dog. Few rounds of breath here, relaxing through the face, softening through the jaw, the teeth. Again, inhale, looking forward between the hands. And on your exhale, nice and light to step or lightly hop all the way forward. It's your choice. You take your time. Inhale out of the pelvis halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach wide and high all the way up. 
And exhale, hands to heart. And then you choose how you like it. If you like your feet right underneath your pelvis, that's fine. If you like your um, feet close together, that's okay too. Keep your legs neutrally rotated here. I'm gonna take my hands onto my hips. We're gonna come down to chair pose. And as we lower down like an elevator, uh, like an elevator, I'm gonna think of my knees tracking forward, even forward of my toes, so that's our dorsiflexion, and my hips going back. And they do that in equal measure and equal time. Knees forward, hips back. You ready? Press down through your feet. Nice big inhale, lift up. Exhale, sit down. Knees forward, hips back. And it's here, I'm a big fan of the bounce because the bounce helps me uh, distribute my activation, what's working, evenly through all areas of the body. Whereas if I just get into a position and I hold it, I'm not necessarily distributing that activity evenly. So I'm just trying to get it to the place here where also my bounce keeps me calm so that I can take myself a little bit deeper. Pelvis back, frontal hip bones down to the thighs, knees forward, using my feet evenly, using my legs evenly from ankles to knees, then knees to hips. And then lengthening out through the spine, trying to get some some feeling of being sovereign there so that then it makes sense maybe for me to take my arms into cactus, keeping the front body lifting, it ribs in, or even along the ears. And a breath in. Good job, you guys. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale out of the pelvis, stretching forward. And exhale, ground your hands, step your feet back one at a time, downward facing dog. Easy through the face here. As you're ready, bend your knees, lift your hips, come forward, high plank, top of a push-up. So you're feeling that pressure on your toes there, pressing back through the heels. And however you wanna come down to your belly is good. Again, I'm gonna take knees down, keep the heart forward. First, el our first joint is elbows, second, shoulders, all the way down. I'm gonna get my legs, gonna take a few extra moments here. That's why I like these slow, so they can be really deliberate. Tailbone rolling to the backs of the heels, legs into pelvis, front body into the back body. Taking my hands underneath my elbows, then it's challenging, it's more challenging there. Okay, using my, my back muscles to start to lift my chest. And then doing whatever feels right here. So staying in this variation, we're keeping the chest forward of those shoulders as I begin to lift up. Oh, Baby, okay. <laughs> Come on back to downward facing dog. Maybe even into a child's pose. So that is uh, big toes together, tops of the feet down. Of course, a blanket underneath them. If we want to develop more plantar flexion, pressing the hips back. You can always take a pillow or blanket behind the knees there, kind of same principle. Maybe relaxing the forehead down to the floor, maybe just to stacked hands. <sighs> Taking full deep breaths into the lower abdomen. So I thank you guys so much for joining in this practice today. If you have a few extra minutes to just kind of hang out here or in another resting posture, that can be really, really good for the nervous system. And uh, next week, we will begin a new module for the knees. We'll keep building this all the way up until the end of the year. So um, I hope you're loving this content so far. Let me know how it's going. 
If you want to support us more, then consider joining our community on Patreon. I have a link down in the description, uh, but that's really where we're hanging out. We're taking your questions. We're uh, using your feedback to make sure that future content is uh, the most effective, the most helpful it possibly can be. And this is also where we're kind of piloting new ideas. So you'll be the first to know about things. You'll have like early access to different future programs that we might create. So uh, consider doing that. And uh, as you move on to the rest of your day, just set yourself up to drink some good water, eat some good food, have some quiet time where you're not looking at a screen. Even if you're just staring out the window, just thinking about things, such a good way for our brain to develop and uh, take good care of yourself and each other. Have a good one. Thanks so much.